thing got moved, man, the way I spun it today. Welcome to Good Mythical More. Let's find out if uh, if Target's full of crap or if their marketing slogans are uh, just unbelievable, but true. Uh, now we're gonna play uh, Daddy Like, Daddy Don't Like. Oh. I'll, I'll be I'll be Daddy Don't Like. Daddy you know? Like Chocolate. Daddy Don't Like White Chocolate. Daddy Like Back Rubs. Daddy Don't Like Rocks. <laughs> Daddy like chocolate and back rubs. Daddy, together. daddy don't like standing in line. Daddy like being back rubbed with chocolate. I feel like this is a violation of the rules. Daddy don't like the way you're violating the rules by adding on to the daddy like things. Daddy like talking about back rubs and chocolate only, but combining them in different ways to continue to get. Daddy don't like when you talk about back rubs and chocolate. <laughs> oh, okay, that's it? Okay. Daddy's feelings are hurt. <laughs> Is daddy like, don't like, I actually got, I was like, I thought we were playing wrong, wrong, because you're supposed to repeat what the other person says. That's another one on, that we, that's uh, on. That me. was a mental, no, that was a mental exercise that we played uh, at some point. When we were drinking caffeine? When we were drinking caffeine. Oh. Yes. Okay. Stevie. Hi. Bullseye or bull crap? These are, th am I right in saying these are Target slogans? No. <laughs> They are like what, what are weird they? things that have happened at Target or Target scandals, and then oh, and scandals. you're trying to guess uh, if we made it up or if it actually didn't happen. If you rearrange the word, the letters in scandal, you can spell slogan. No, not true. Do you think? Well, let's get the first question. I have I have a, another have you ever question. Had a back, I, I would like have you to ever had a back rub with chocolate. No, but it's probably something that happens at like a resort in Tulum. You know, in 2015. Customers were evacuated from a Target in San Luis Obispo after a prankster hijacked the PA system and started playing pornographic noises over the speakers. Uh, Bullseye! Yeah, I, I don't know all the details. That's, uh, that's gotta be Because some. I w was not there. <laughs> but I do remember hearing about this. I remember hearing about something like this. Yeah, if I was there, true. I would have remembered hearing yeah. it. The um, SLO Tribune, you know reported that managers were only able to shut off the recording after customers were evacuated. What's worse is the prankster was able to pull the same stunt at a San Jose location during Mommy and Me Day a oh, few yeah. months later. Aww, you, you can just go right down the street. On. I have a Google alert set for anything that interest, interesting that happens in San Luis Obispo. Uh, so that's how I knew about that. Giant clam? Yeah, that's Pismo Beach. Oh. But I think they are close to each other. I have yeah, a Google alert close. for giant clams. Uh, here's a question, and that question is, was there any crossover between Spuds McKenzie, who you pointed out earlier, uh, was the Budweiser dog and the Target dog? What do you mean by crossover? Meaning like were, they, the were they both on being at the same utilized time? by the brand at the same time? Let me see. Or did Budweiser say, like, we're doing away with the dog, and Target was like, well, we're going to get the same exact kind of dog. And put a red dot around his eye versus a. Didn't Spuds McKenzie have a black dot around one eye? He has like an uneven spot. I think he had like. Yeah, yeah, uneven spot. Is Spuds McKenzie like early 90s? Like, is this. Um, started in 87 yep. and then went through 89. And then. This is, it was a deep cut for. It was. Yep, and then so after 89, didn't appear until 2017. Came back. Yeah, so that the 2017 appearance was the only time that uh, they would have crossed paths because okay. Bullseye started in 1999. Let's hear another Target oh, well, tidbit. Yeah. In 2011, after a woman was asked to stop breastfeeding her baby in the women's section of a Houston Target, women across the country protested by holding nurse-ins at more than 100 Target locations in 35 states. Um, I support public breastfeeding. And so of infants, I, I, <laughs> right? You got to clarify. I was saying personally, <laughs> I support my right to publicly breastfeed. <laughs> it sounds a little different, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, of infants, and so of course, they, you know, most studies show that you should let your kid go until about age four if you want them to be fully adjusted and have all the antibodies and let them walk right up to it. You know, yeah. But I always say once they could ask for it is when you start saying no. But that is not what the child psychologists uh, advise. 
Yeah. <laughs> it seems very cruel. That just seems like a cruel. I mean, it. Once they can ask for it, that's when you tell them no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're both saying this is. Uh, this this is true because we support it. And you're both right. Yeah. Yeah. Good, um, for, good for them. And you know what? I bet Target changed their mind. No. So, so Target has said that they have long supported mothers being able to breastfeed in their stores, and that they would do a better job educating their team members on their own policies. Mm. Okay. Right. Sometimes that happens. It's difficult for a representative or an employee of an organization to know all the deal, right? And sometimes you got one bad apple like at a McDonald's that doesn't know that you're not supposed to say no to asking for extra sauce on the McRib. Right. You know who you are. Do you want this? This is... What about this? This is a collectible metal lunch box that is the rent link through the Snackiverse. And this is, uh, for lack of a better word, our version of a TARDIS, and this is how we actually get through. Actually, it's a thermos. If you want this um, one-of-a-kind collectible, the only way to get it is to join the Mythical Society, um, and to get it at this point, you gotta join Third Degree Quarterly or Annual Plan by March 31st to get this thing. What a immaculate artwork. Uh, all the way around. All the way around. Let's hear it, Stevie. In 2016, a group of recently escaped convicts tried to rob a Nebraska target. When the three men were promptly caught and returned to the ne Nebraska State, State Penitentiary, one of them asked to be separated from his cronies. When asked why, the robber said, they asked me to pick an easy target. Turns out they meant like an old lady's house. That's horrible. That's a horrible, uh, horrible joke. The, pun, the puns. Uh, I don't think, I mean, first of all, if you get out of prison and you want to rob something, don't make it a big place like Target where there's too many cameras, it's too big, there's too many entrances, it's too difficult to control. You need to find a small mom and pop shop to take advantage of. <laughs> bull crap. Bull crap, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is bull crap. All right, keep them coming. Former Target employee John Keenan once witnessed a man frantically changing into different sports teams jerseys in the middle of the store. When Keenan told the customer that they had changing room, the customer replied, No! I have a flight to catch in 10 minutes and I need shirts for my bros! Okay. What? A, what how would this story even make it to out of that Target? You, know you won't saying? believe. <laughs> you won't believe point. what this man said. That is... In the middle of like, the target. How does that story make it into the news of some sort? Um, That's yeah, bull crap, yeah, you're right. Man. You're right. There's no way. Bull crap. It's it's true. <laughs> what? Okay. I, I don't know. Also, the closest airport to that target's location was 40 minutes away. So uh, that customer was never going to make it to his bros on time. I mean, there's definitely been times. I mean, it, I'll put it to you this way: if I'm, if I'm interested in buying something that I can try on right there without having to expose more skin first, I will always opt to do that. Is that wrong? No. I, well, obviously you try, it, you try on jackets without going anywhere. And then- Or like an overshirt. An overshirt. Or a sweatshirt. But do you take like, mm, I'm gonna take my t-shirt off and put this t-shirt on. I, and like if I was wearing this, I would take this sweater off and then I would put on another sweater. But I wouldn't- Of course. And I guess that would be exposing more skin, but you know what I mean. I would is do that, that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Is that is but that frowned upon? Jerseys on. But if everybody did that, then the store there'd turns no into a changing. Room. Well, there'd be plenty. There, no. there would it be empty? Right. Remember, the store stores, would become a changing room. Remember yeah. when, like, it's so far you can't even imagine what it was like inside of a store. Yeah, but you know, do you agree or disagree, Stevie? Do you think it's fine what I, I do? I truly can't recall, but I, I feel like I would do the same thing. Just to pull it over right there. Yeah, I think now, so. If you're gonna do that and then you don't buy it, you need to fold it back up and put it back. You just can't like toss it. So you gotta be, you gotta factor that in. I think that's part of my code. Last winter, a customer at a Miami Target became irate when he couldn't find an employee to help him. Knocking over a display of Venus razors in frustration, an employee finally came up to him and asked if he was all right. The customer said he couldn't find an employee, and when the other man identified himself as one, the two men then realized that because the customer was colorblind, he was unable to see the abundance of Target employees in their red shirts. Uh, this is this is cute. This is a cute thing to think. 
Venus razors is an interesting detail. But I think there are other context clues of, that you would pick up on, like the tucking of the shirt, the name tags. Uh, so I'm, I'm calling bullcrap on this. I think colorblind people can still see... Um, the targetness? They can still see red, I think, actually. Colorblind not, is not complete colorblind. Well, well, if they're red-green colorblind, they can't tell that it's red, which is the, uh, probably the most common colorblind. The ve Venus detail is what threw me off. Uh, why, why would you include that in the article? Oh, I like the Venus detail, oh, but it is, it is fake. <laughs> I it, it is fake. It's really fake. Okay. All right. Um, in February of 2014, an employee at a Target in Fresno, California, uh, noticed a group of young boys idling around the electronics section playing video games. Okay. This wasn't unusual until she saw them again in the party supplies section and then again playing with toys in the sporting goods section. Uh, when she asked them where their parents were, they pointed her towards the food court where she found a group of moms drinking spiked ices. <laughs> when the employee saw the moms prepping party favors, it was clear they were hosting a Target birthday party. Wow. And you can't do that? What's wrong with what they did? Now, you say food court. You mean a food court inside of a Target? I think that they're like talking the, about, like, yeah, the area where you get the slushies. And I like think it's, there's a, it's a super Target. I think this is there real. Are, there are, uh, I definitely feel like this is real. I think, and I think this is a good and idea. And I don't understand what's wrong with this. It's fake, but it oh. does, it is an interesting hack. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you used to go on dates. One of my first dates with Jesse was just walking around a Super Target. Um, these are the things that you do in North Carolina for fun. But I, you know what? It, to bolster that point, it's also it's kind of like playing house. You know, it's like, hey, we're just starting a date, but let's act like we're we've been we've been a couple for a long time. And, and, that was and not at all what our we were idea. Well, well, you gonna fall? My chair just gave. I gotta go to Target and get a new one. Do you want to? Is that the universe telling you to change your answer? Uh, is that what you were thinking? Uh, I wasn't thinking that at all. I was just thinking that. Like, I think it's a good date idea, but it's a simulation of, um, you know, well, maybe a relationship for you. That's, that's settled into kind of like a ditch. Yeah. What do you want to do? Let's go to Walmart. You just walk around, and hey, actually, that time we went, it turns out that. The guy who ran security at this uh, t particular Super Target went to uh, was the boyfriend of one of Jesse's friends, and he came out. He's like, "I saw you on the cameras." <laughs> so that was cool. I recommend making out in the fabric session. Session? <laughs> Having a session in the section. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean fabric section? You know the place where they've got all the reams of fabric. That's not. They don't have that at Target. I don't believe. <laughs> That's, you're talking about Michael's? No, they have that at Walmart. Fabric section? I haven't been to a fabric se section at a Walmart or a Target. We're tied up. Let's I, see. Definitely not at Target. I, have we had this conversation where it was, like, I, I feel like Target, <clears throat> I feel like I remember when Target opened in North Carolina, or like, I feel like it was like. I remember like, thinking of Target as new. I remember yeah. thinking Walmart is new, because we just had oh, roses. Oh, really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, we've been through we it had all. Sky City and roses, and then we had all of a sudden it's like Walmart. Well, it's like oh, they got groceries in there. That's nuts. And then Target was like, oh, we got like a nice Walmart. Yeah, yeah. but apparently, Target was open in 1962, and and the first Targets in North Carolina were in the early 80s, which is weird. I well, just don't remember that. Do you that. know when the first Trader Joe's was? I only know this because I saw it on one of those reusable bags from Trader Joe's. No. Just guess. Uh, nineteen eighty-three. Uh, Chase would like to say seventeen seventy-six. It was in Pasadena, and it was nineteen sixty-seven. Wow! So, like, who would have known that Trader Joe's was that old? But that was a little different. Well, it was probably different then. You know, they have they just opened a Trader Joe's in Greensboro, like a couple years back, I think. Yeah. And so, when my mom like talks about it, she talks about it like it's a badge of honor. You know, oh, it's a sign that your neighborhood is like, oh, from Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah. I mean, people would drive over an hour to go to the Trader Joe's in Cary when we lived down there in Fuquay. Oh, yeah. You'd make a haul. Let's see if we can break this tie. Okay, this is the last one. So it, come, it all comes down to this. 
An overzealous customer prepared with bags of coupons once took advantage of a new Target employee who was unaware of the limited number of coupons you can use per transaction. Coupons, she says. The coupons. I say that sometimes. Instead of coupons? Yeah, I go back Coupons to seems not right to me. Coupons. The entire transaction took an hour and a half, and by the end of it, the customer only owed $1 for $500 worth of products. I'm, so, I'm saying this is true because- We, we, we know it's possible. We, we, our wives almost got into- Couponing. Couponing in a big way. They both had very large binders right when we first got married uh, that were full of coupons. And uh, yeah. like Jesse's mom was like a whiz at it and would like come back with like these long receipts and be like, look what I did. And they all felt intimidated by how good she was at it and they tried to do it, but then they just couldn't really ever get their minds around it. You've I'm not seen... gonna say that my wife wasn't smart enough to do it. I'm just gonna say it they wasn't worth their time. They couldn't fully commit to it. I You've used seen the wrong like terms. the garages of like those like hyper yeah. couponers. Yeah. That have like stocks in their garage. Yeah, I think there was a show about it, but no. You end up buying a lot of stuff in bulk. Yeah, I, I, this, is, this is true. Yes, it's true. When the Target employee rang up the final total of $1, the customer insisted that they must have missed a coupon. <laughs> Not wanting <laughs> well, they to wanted make, to get out of there for free? Yeah. Not wanting to make an issue of it, the employee scanned one final coupon and the customer walked away with two carts of stuff completely free. free. Unbelievable. Kind of like you today. Binders. You know what? You're walking away from this episode just scot free to, to live your life today. I hope it's a good one. Get the latest quarterly collectible item, the Mythical Snackiverse Lunchbox and Thermos Set by joining the Mythical Society third degree quarterly or annual plan by March 31st. Visit mythicalsociety.com.